Hello, dear students. Today we are going to continue our talk about the theory of multiple intelligences. We shall start with grammar. Open your books at page 73, exercise 5. Relative clauses. They can be defining or non-defining. Now let's remember the rules. Relative pronouns. Who, that, whose, and which, that, and the relative adverbs where, when, and why introduce relative Clauses. These are the things which I bought today. We use who that to refer to people. This is the cashier who is very polite and helpful. We use whose to show possession. It cannot be omitted. Mary is the woman whose bookshop we often go to. We use where to refer to places. It is used after nouns such as place, house, tree, town and country. This is a clothes shop where you can find clothes at good prices. We use when to refer to a time. It is used after nouns such as time, period, moment, day and summer. It can either be replaced by that or omitted. Saturday is the day when I usually go to the supermarket. Saturday is the day that I usually go to the supermarket. We use why to give reason, usually after the word reason. It can either be replaced by that or omitted. The reason why many prefer online shopping is the convenience it offers. The reason that many prefer online shopping is the convenience it offers. The reason many prefer online shopping is the convenience it offers. A defining relative clause gives necessary information and is essential to the meaning of the main sentence. We do not put the clause in commas. We can use that instead of who or which. Joan is a woman who loves shopping for clothes. Who, which, that can be omitted when it is the object of the relative clause. That is, when there is a noun or a pronoun between who, which, that and the verb. This is the dress which I want to buy. This is the dress that I want to buy. This is the dress I want to buy. A non-defining relative clause gives extra information and is not essential to the meaning of the main sentence. The clause is put in commas. We cannot use that instead of who. David, who is an executive, always wears a suit to work. And one more example. Harrods, which is a famous department store in London, has 330 departments. And now, in exercise 5, you are to find examples in the text. Let's check. Shakira has an IQ of 140, which almost makes her genius. It's a non-defining relative clause. The theory proposes that there is not just one intelligence, but eight or more intelligences that we all have to a greater or lesser extent. It's a defining relative clause. Each intelligence is a skill which people are good at. It's a defining clause. She has the ability to move her body on a stage, where the movements she makes create a performance. It's a non-defining relative clause. In exercise 6, you are to join the sentences using the relative pronoun or adverb in brackets. Make any other necessary changes. In exercise 7, you are to do a survey, interview your classmates, ask them what type of intelligence they are and why. Find out the most popular intelligence. You are to present the information on a poster. Let's listen to the example. What type of intelligence are you? I'm linguistic because I love learning languages. And your task is exercise 8. You are to collect information online about Howard Gardner. You are to write his biography. Make sure you plan your biography, edit it, 
for any unnecessary information and proofread it for any mistakes. You can also find pictures to illustrate it. Let's listen to the model. Howard L. Gardner was born in Pennsylvania, USA in 1943. He is a developmental psychologist. He is best known for his theory of multiple intelligences. He graduated from Harvard University in 1965 and he also earned a PhD. In 1983, he wrote a book called Frames of Mind, The Theory of Multiple Intelligences. He proposed that humans have several different ways of processing information, and these ways are relatively independent of one another. He has received a lot of criticism for his theory, but he has also received a lot of awards. He won the National Psychology Award for Excellence in the Media for his book, as well as a number of fellowships and the Brock International Prize in Education. Today, he is the Senior Director of Harvard Project Zero, and since 1995, he has been the co-director of The Good Project, which studies human development.